Good afternoon, traders. Welcome to the Bookmap Professional Trader webinar series here. Uh, today, uh, we were going to have Niels Koops. Um, he uh, just contacted me about a half hour ago uh, and um, he experienced a crash uh, on his uh, virtual uh, uh, private server uh, and um, uh, he lost uh, his data in, in, uh, in his presentation. So what we're going to do uh, is uh, I'm going to hold the uh, uh, regular um, uh, webinar that we have in our educational process, our advanced uh, order flow webinar, uh, so that uh, uh, you know there's something to go over here. Uh, we'll take a look at a lot of different things, and it'll give you guys a, a peek into our education, uh, what we offer there uh, for subscribers, and uh, I'll, um, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then we'll have Niels again. Uh, you know, he was he was really bummed. Uh, he was uh, looking very forward to this. He had an excellent example, he said today, uh, in the DAX. Um, so, um, uh, you know, some really good stuff to show. Uh, he's an excellent trader. So it's uh, it's a pity uh, he um, uh, had some uh, technical issues uh, this morning. Um, and um, uh, anyway, uh, we'll have him next week. We'll uh, reschedule this. Uh, and uh, continue it uh, next week. So, um, uh, if you guys uh, are uh, are game here, uh, then uh, we'll go through the, uh, the the markets and live analysis uh, and what we do in our education here, uh, and then uh, and take it from there. Okay. All right. Well, so uh, let's uh, jump in here then, uh, and um, uh, the uh, live order flow uh, advanced analysis uh, webinar. This is what we normally do here. Uh, the risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So as I mentioned, this is part of the education. There's a course that comes with uh, the education when you subscribe, uh, and that's available online all the time. And then every day we have this advanced webinar. Okay, and this is this is it. So we'll go through it today. And this advanced webinar, we really jump in and look at the order flow specifics. We've moved uh, beyond the basics uh, and we really start to delve into what the order flow is telling us on multiple time frames, uh, starting at the higher time frame and then drilling down and then looking at as many examples as we can of order flow phenomena and how to uh, objectively read it. Uh, and then we start to anticipate future price movement based on what we see in our analysis, okay? So uh, therefore, you have the course, and then you also have the um, uh, live market to understand what it looks like, uh, ask questions, and then you can start to uh, analyze and anticipate where price is gonna go, all right? So we'll uh, we'll jump in here, and we'll take a look here at the, uh, at the S&P E-mini. Uh, I have a bunch of markets open, so let me know if you guys uh, want to look at something uh, specific. We have uh, uh, NASDAQ, we have uh, crude, uh, we have the uh, uh, notes, uh, we have the euro, uh, Bitcoin, and uh, some stocks here as well. Okay, so Apple, Tesla, Netflix, JP Morgan, and Twitter. All right, so uh, uh, let me know. Uh, we'll go through many different examples here. <laughs> okay, you want to look at uh, Bitcoin. All right, uh, we will, uh, we'll take a look at that. Um, some kind of crazy stuff here, uh, looking at the um, uh, the NASDAQ here. Uh, uh, Suleiman, no, I was not able to uh, to get uh, the um, FDAX uh, and um, uh, FESX. Uh, so um, sorry about that. I know that you had re recorded or requested that, um, but uh, no, I was not able to get that data, okay? Anyway, we will figure it out um, and we will get it, um, but uh, uh, just ha hang in there a little little longer. Uh, I should have data uh, soon for that. Okay. Um, well, uh, kind of a funky day here in the S&P, uh, looking at the uh, the order flow. Look at the 9:30 open here, as you can see. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of volume always at the open. We'll move to the upside, but look at this stacked book here. Okay, this usually is pretty good indicator. Uh, that this is going to go higher, okay? Because we had not only them stacked in here with the uh, uh, limit orders, we also had them pulling up here. So this was free uh, for the uh, the aggressors, the aggressive buyers, to take this higher, okay? They did not. They chose not to. Uh, so let's zoom into this area here, okay? And and just start to understand 
what's going on in the book here, uh, the larger players that are involved, uh, some really, you know, it's really good stuff to, to take a look at here. Um, and um, uh, for example, uh, you can see that uh, uh, we have uh, a little area of consolidation right here, okay? So let's take a quick look, All right? We broke out of that consolidation. Now, usually uh, in the order flow, what you see uh, is uh, quite a bit of uh, aggressive buying it takes, okay? It's required uh, to reevaluate this instrument and for it to trade up into a higher range and to accept in that higher range, okay? And that's exactly what it did here. And then it struggled up here. Okay, so, uh, and then here's the retest. In fact, the, the retest here is actually pretty bullish too, okay, because usually the retest, what you'll see is it come back down into uh, the lowest point would be probably right around here where there's gonna be a low volume node, okay? We know that uh, there's gonna be a low volume node in here is because look at all the volume that traded in this area and look at all the volume that traded here. Uh, and of course, we can, we can come over here and we can look at our um, uh, volume columns. Uh, so uh, uh, Niels, Niels is in here uh, as well. Niels, uh, feel free to chime in if you if you like uh, on on anything, uh, and uh, I'll uh, hand the mic over to you. Um, but um, uh, yeah, real, real pity uh, that um, uh, you had such good examples. Uh, so uh, anyway, yeah, let me let me know. Um, the um, uh, and looking looking very forward uh, to uh, to next week. Uh, Niels is an excellent trader. Uh, he's been trading for for quite a while. Uh, and looks at very specific things. He knows exactly what he's looking at, all right? So um, anyway, uh, point here about the tape and the order flow is you'll see this again and again and again. Uh, you know, the, the buying needs to pick up in this area right here, okay? It's, uh, uh, it's what's required for it to lift up out of this area where price was uh, complacent. Uh, it was uh, uh, in, in uh, equilibrium here. Okay, well, something, you know, changed, uh, and that change happened here on the breakout, okay? So uh, that's um, uh, one thing that uh, we, we look for to see who is in control, okay? And we know buyers are in control. We can see it in the, uh, the size of the dots and the color, uh, uh, you know, green uh, at higher and higher highs here, okay? So they're buying at higher highs. This is bullish. Okay. Usually, what occurs in this trend is you see that uh, on the on the retests um, or uh, the pullbacks, uh, there's actually a little bit of selling here. Usually, what you see, like in these examples here, is very little selling. Okay, and more buying at higher highs. Okay, it's just how the order flow works. No one's interested down here. Uh, price rejects out of this area, it exhausts out of these areas, uh, and comes back up into the mean where it can trade. Okay, because there's other transactions that have taken place there. And if those transactions start to take place at the high, okay, you can get price discovery to the upside. Okay, and that's what kind of, that's how these structures of trends start to exist. Okay, and we can see it here uh, pretty, pretty nicely. Um, so um, uh, anyway, it's pretty, pretty flat uh, uh, trend as well. It's not the most, most aggressive here. Uh, but uh, that's why we want to understand um, uh, some of these price structures and random walks uh, in price, okay, and price channels, okay. Why do some of these old technical uh, analysis uh, 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 patterns work? Uh, it's just it's just because like uh, it, it's really starting to understand within a, a range what the value of this uh, instrument is, okay. So. Um, and uh, if you have more buyers at higher highs, well, you're, you're, you're going to get price discovery to the upside. Uh, someone's going to be interested in taking it higher. Okay, uh, and, uh, and that's just reading the tape here. Now, we haven't gotten to the order book quite yet. Uh, the, uh, the order book is uh, uh, also uh, is an important part here. But you can see they're pulling liquidity here, pulling liquidity here, and pulling, well, they actually stayed in here. Okay, and they, we see the transaction, and that was the high okay, at this point, all right? So uh, you can see it tried a few more times here. Now, uh, this is uh, pretty trappy here. I mean, look at look at the uh, the interest here, okay? Bidding up at a higher level, this is very bullish, okay? and it's a lot of liquidity here uh, as well. One tick after another here, or every other tick, I should say, okay? And it's, uh, it's right down by this swing here uh, in this area. 
All right. So uh, what occurred here? Let's uh, let's take a quick look. Okay. I mean, it's looking just just great here. Uh, you've got uh, them bidding up uh, in these higher areas, uh, and the uh, the offers here are being pulled. Okay. What we need, the piece that is just missing here, is the aggressor at the higher highs. Okay. See the exhaustion up in this area up here once, twice, thrice, uh, and just very little uh, buying up here. In fact, we, we can look right at it, and we can see that uh, 200 contracts uh, traded at, at this level here. One tick below that, we have like 10 times that, okay, over 2,000, more than 10 times that. Okay, so uh, basically, we're exhausting out here on the buy side. There's no more interest, okay? Well, the sellers start to read read that. They they they, uh, we find responsive sellers starting to come in, uh, at least take it to the mean, usually to the other side of the range, okay? Now, here's where it gets interesting. They start pulling, okay? So this is, it's required to kind of understand and uh, uh, zoom into these areas here uh, to really understand their behavior. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Niels, do you want to chime in? Uh, you're more than welcome here. Uh, so uh, this, is, uh, this is what you're looking at in the DAX, I think, uh, you're mentioning. Let me know and I'll uh, I'll uh, make your mic. Uh... Okay, okay, great. All right, hold on. Uh, hold on here a minute. I see your question there, Suleiman. Okay, let me find Niels. Here we go. Okay, Niels, there can you? you... Yeah, yeah, there you are. Yeah, hey guys. Yeah, sorry about the technical difficulties, but um, I'll make it up next time. But um, but yeah, this was actually what I was looking at. Um, but then in the in the in the DAX, um, um, at at the time the high was put in at the ES, um, right about the offers at um, the time was nine fifty five, ish. Yes. Yeah, there. Yeah. Um, at that time, at the DAX, there were so many offers being put in. Um, so I went short. Um, but I got, a, I, I got a bit cautious because because at the same, well, like a minute later, all those bits came in on the ES. I was like, oh boy, <laughs> are they going to push it up? Um, but then they didn't. And um, so I, I, kept, I kept my short. Um, and they were just they kept offering a down index. Um, and I think I have saved that data uh, on, on the computer, on the on the trading desk. Um, so I, I, ho I hope I can show that next time. It, it's really, really, really clear. Um, but so anyway, so when it, when it came down, when the ES came down to like the tens, um, you could see not everything traded that they were bidding. And, I kind of expected that. Usually, it trades through. Well, well, this is just one, one, one firm bidding probably because they came all together. So they just were bidding like six, five prizes or something. They just wanted to fill. Um, so that that was really interesting to me. And and when that happened, um, it didn't take back. And when it didn't, when it doesn't take back right away, um, at that time, like the like it's micro, it's like short term. It's 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 weakish. Um, if they were like really powerful, they would have bid it back up to the above the tens, and they didn't. So the decks keep going down as well, and especially in the decks, they kept offering it lower and lower. It, it's I, I've actually never seen it. So today was really interesting. Um, so the offers were just being brought down, brought down. I think the decks went down. Well, made a new low, so I think it went down that point for like. I don't know, like 60, 70 points or something without without a decent pullback. So yeah, that was that was really, really clear today. Um and that's what I wanted to show you guys. But unfortunately I couldn't. But um but yeah. So that that uh yeah, made a lot of sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean this is really uh uh you know, kind of, kind of wicked here. Um, yep. But this is this is where you know, you know, 
you, you really need to like know the facts and zoom in. Uh, yeah. This is at least what I find. Uh, and they're pulling, you know, they're pulling their liquidity. So do they have the intent to trade? Well, it looks fantastic here, right? Yeah. It just looks yeah. amazing. Um, yeah. and, and they're pulling on the offer. This is, you know, it looks like it wants to go up. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the, the exhaust out on the buy side here, sellers come in and then these guys are pulling here. Well, they, they got to go lower. Uh, yeah. uh, and um, uh, so, so this really, um, uh, they had no intent to trade here, and and that that is how it ended. And this is the fact here. They they didn't have the intent, uh, yeah. so uh, we're we're going lower to find uh, find higher liquidity, um, and uh, usually that's uh, at some of the swings and some of the stops here. Actually, I was really kind of surprised here. I was very surprised to be honest. Um, this uh, did not go below the uh, swing open uh, yeah. down here. Yeah. So yeah. I was looking for it to spike down below and then come back up. Uh, Me too. It, Me too it, actually. The, the, the DAX did actually. They made a new uh, low in the day. I think at that point. Huh. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. So I was like, okay, so it's probably close to an end <laughs> since the ES didn't go lower. So yeah, that was that was pretty interesting. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, it's it's always uh, you know, it's kind of tough because uh, especially I think in the ES. Um, uh, I mean, it's just so much liquidity and it, it, so many uh, yeah. uh, contracts trade uh, yeah. that, uh, yeah. you know, you expect this or you look for this down here because you know that there's going to be stops down here. Mm -hmm. But, it, you, you know, you you know, you know you place orders down here uh, and then you get left behind, um, okay. you know, because, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it can be that can be really tricky, I think, with the uh, with the S&P, yeah. uh, whereas the uh, like you say, like the DAX or the NASDAQ or or crude. Uh, you usually will get that spike down below, um, yeah. very, very briefly, briefly, but you probably will, will get it. Um, that, True. Uh, yeah, yeah. So and um, another interesting point is that here, like around 10:40 ish, where where you see the the offers coming in, and we had a pullback to the to the what is it 06s. Um, that also happened on the DAX. So I took that on the DAX, um, and at that at that price level, there was also like relatively there was also liquidity um so i took that kind of like the break down level right uh test of the breakdown level where, where all the big bits were before they pulled yeah right right yeah, there yeah, yeah here with the, here with the, with the, was it yeah 10? yeah um so you're, you're speaking of this area here right right now yeah yeah okay yeah um, no, at, at the, um, the tens, like the the, the the little spike to the from the tens till the elevens. Oh, uh, in here. At ten. At t the time was ten forty. Oh, okay. Oh, in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I yeah. figured they would try to, like, get get back into the. Well. It was still in range, but like try to make a move. Um, I don't know. Well, I think it was more <laughs> on my feeling that it would fail the first time. But anyway, I, I took it and then it, it pulled back. Um, it was nice for a little, like I think I took only like 15 points on the DAX or something, whatever. But um, and the next one is also really interesting, right? The, the one you were pointing out after with the 08s, the, the bits that got tested. Mm. That is also a really, really nice example of how how liquidity can hold, or at least try and hold the market, and then it went back to uh, nope. this this area here. Yeah. 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 So I mean, there, there's there's the the the, the you know um, uh, another fact there. I mean, these guys did stay in the book and they did yeah. transact. Yeah, and I always look at that below where you see the volume volume spiking, and then you know it's traded. Right, right here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it a volume spike? And that, that for me, that's enough. If volume is spiking, then I know something's happening. Um, yeah, so I, well, I, it's, it goes pretty fast, right? So you don't have like a minute to think about it, usually. <laughs> um, especially not in the DAX. The DAX can spike like crazy. So that that's sometimes you have to even have to be like in the book beforehand and then, then just, um, well, I wouldn't say pray, but kind of hope you're right. <laughs> and get you know, that, one. That, 
that's that's actually something like uh, in in our in our um, uh, advanced webinars, uh, you know, okay. daily. Uh, we we uh, we don't get to that level. Um, that's more kind of advanced. Um, uh, that's one one more step because um, it's hard enough to um, uh, you know you know to look at at these uh, price structures and the uh, 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 you know liquidity and volume and start to understand. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing is like, for example, like here, you know, you see the breakout to the upside, right? Yes. Um, but you're anticipating that here, you know, before it happens, you're you're yeah. thinking, well, you know, this is what the DAX is most likely gonna do. So mm -hmm. if I wanna capture that, I've got to be in down here uh, and then wait for that to happen. If it doesn't happen, then yeah. I'm out. And uh, right. so you're, you're anticipating that stru this structure to already exist. Uh, and uh, it's fantastic, uh, Niels. I mean, I, I, you know, I, you know, we know you're an excellent trader, uh, but uh, that's a little bit beyond uh, what what we do in the in the webinars here. But that that's sure. the next yeah, step. Yeah. That's the next step. It, yeah. And I think, like you mentioned, though, for the DAX, you kind of have to do that. Yeah, I mean, it just spikes so fast. If if you like uh, two seconds late, then you miss like five points already, usually, and. Yeah, that's just just a shame to, to miss that. If you wanna, if you're interested in that level anyway, it's just better to put in a bit and then, uh, yeah, just, just like like look at the risk. Of course, I mean it, it can go. Uh, it doesn't have to bounce right at that point. Um, but if it, if it's some kind of extension or a new low, um, usually they spike a little bit back too because it, they're just running stops, you know and since the DAX is so, um, uh, well, the book is, is pretty empty, so it, it, it has fast moves and yeah, it's just lower lower volume, uh, even though the contract is bigger. Um, right. Yeah, but it, it depends. Like on the ES, I wouldn't do that. It's different because um, it's way more liquidity. Um, but, but like, for example, if, if people don't know the DAX, um, it trades at uh, like half points, um and per per price there's on average like eight or ten contracts uh, uh bid and offers so it's really really empty so the bigger if it's get getting bigger if you see, see the kind of i don't know some big trader bidding then there may be 30 contracts at some point but that's about it so you, you can like imagine that it go it can go really fast if someone's like has to sell 50 lot then you you move it you move it like six points already or something, you know, like, yeah, it just goes really fast. Yeah. I mean, I, I think um, uh, that's a, a really good point here because like uh, in the ES, for example, um, you know, you're, you're probably going to get another rotation uh, and, uh, and yeah. you're, you're, you're probably going to get filled. And in fact, not only is it going to be one rotation, it'll probably be like two or three, yeah, um, you, you know, it always goes back and forth like that. Um, yeah. But uh um, you know your your kind of advanced entry here is a real real nice um, a way of uh, of thinking and you know we'll we'll, we'll wait we'll we'll do we'll do the uh, uh, presentation next week um, yeah. but the um, uh, you know you what down here and you anticipate you know this kind of breakout to occur here mm -hmm. uh, well your your risk is minimal you know take yeah. a shot at it you know yeah. anticipate this take a shot at it down here. Uh, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, then, uh, you know, if you're in, you got, you've got it great. Uh, you know, you'll probably take a, a number of small losses, but, uh, you can easily make that up with just like one of these, um, uh, you know, moves to the upside, uh, in the yeah. DAX. True. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, let's see here. Just a, a few questions. Uh, Suleiman, uh, <laughs> thank you. That's a very nice offer to, uh, show your screen and, uh, and then have Niels' audio. Um, I, let's uh, let's hold off and um, uh, let's uh, wait until uh, uh, Niels has uh, uh, you know his um, uh, some of his examples. He'll have he'll have uh, more examples uh, for next week uh, yeah. as well. So uh, that'll be good. Uh, and um, uh, since I got you guys on here and I see some um, uh, different uh, suggestions coming in uh, for for Bookmap, well, let me let me show you something here. Uh, and and uh, this is. You know, a good time to just kind of uh, show this to you guys, because uh, we have all these resources that a lot of people really uh, don't know about. Um, 
we have a book map forum here. Uh, if you guys are interested in, uh, you know, um, uh, giving, um, uh, there's all sorts of good stuff here about our API, uh, new indicators, uh, et cetera. But for features and requests, go to the general form here and then click on features and requests here uh, and add your, uh, your feature or, you know, your suggestion in here. Okay, that's the way to go. Uh, development will look directly at this uh, and then they'll, they'll be, uh, uh, you know, gauging uh, the interest here. Uh, so, uh, uh, and then, and then developing from then, in fact, that's exactly what we're doing with Niels, uh, yeah, developing exactly. things. So, yeah. so, uh, yeah. yeah, let us, let us know and use, use the form here. Okay. Um, and, uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah. So, so a little, little background, I'm, I'm trading at the floor, um, uh, for, for a firm in Amsterdam and, um, um, so we have like unlimited data, like uh, unlimited depth and, and, and data for stocks and everything. Um, so we 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 uh, work together with with Bookmap to um, to develop an uh, an API to get our proprietary proprietary data into Bookmap, and that we just kind of finished that up, and it's actually really cool. Um, so I'm testing that in the coming weeks, and um, yeah, it looks really promising. So um, before that, it was really hard to get any data or good data for, for stocks and stuff like that. Um, and I also, uh, I'm, al I'm also now, um, looking at the, the DAX, uh, and the futures for, uh, through that API. Um, it's probably similar to what, it should be similar to what I have on my rhythmic feed or DTN, but, but yeah, um, this is really interesting. So it, it gives a, a lot more options to, to look at stuff and, um, yeah, pretty happy with it so far. Yeah, and that's great. I mean, that'll really open things up. Yeah. Uh, once we, once we get up uh, with that, and uh, and Sulem and I should be able to get uh, some DAX data as well. Uh, I think uh, from from that. Um, so uh, uh, I I don't know. I need to speak with uh, uh, Sahi, our our CEO. But uh, I'm trying to get uh, uh, URX data um, and uh, figure something out. Uh, it's been requested here in the room. Uh, you have Rhythmic running, so you can just request uh, your Rex on that. I, I have that. I have that too. I'm sorry. I see you're running Rhythmic a Rhythmic feed for the. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So I, I have that too on my, on my own computers, and uh, I have just um, well enabled your Rex on that, and so you get DAX as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah I I spoke with my broker about this, and I um I was not, they did not offer it, so I was not able to oh. get it. Uh, oh. Okay. So. Um, uh, that was uh, that was a pity. Uh, they offered it through CQG, but not through Rhythmic. That's weird. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, I thought so as well. Uh, <laughs> but, but anyway, um, uh, so uh, oh, a uh, question here on your um, uh, uh, on your data here. Are you getting full depth uh, for your uh, Urex? Um, uh, right now, um, no. Uh, but it should be full depth. Um, they 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 limit it down because the firm mainly trades stocks and that's unlimited depth for everything. Um, on Eurex they had a T1 connection and they're gonna up it to uh, like a T whatever I don't know like a 10 I think a 10 a 10 megabytes uh, line um, and they have to redo the connection and connect to another server and it's gonna take a month or two to do that. And then we have full depth on everything, on whole Eurex, on, on like yeah, but yeah. That'll that'll be fantastic. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that'll be a game changer. Yeah, um, yeah. Totally. Especially for uh, thin thin instruments like the DAX. Yeah. 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 Oh, that'll be fantastic. Yeah, but we're now it's just 15 levels or something. 15 levels is nothing on the DAX. It's just like seven point is so yeah that yeah. 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 So, so guys, I, you know, I just wanted to point this out to, um, uh, so, I mean, you can see like we're working, um, you know, very closely with, with Niels here, uh, on indicators. Uh, I just want to mention this because, uh, this is really exciting, uh, new direction here, um, is the, uh, uh, the book map API. Okay. Developing custom indicators, strategies, uh, even connections to, uh, various exchanges. That's all possible now. Okay, uh, and that's what we've been talking about. So you can develop your own. It's this is it's Java based, uh, but um, uh, uh, if you don't know Java, you can hire someone who does. 
uh, and develop uh, really whatever you you want uh, and uh, and have that data uh, in Bookmap. All right. So uh, uh, Terry, we already have a correlation tracker uh, on the, in Bookmap uh, that's uh, already exists. But uh, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I just want to mention that because a really exciting direction. Uh, you know, we had um, uh, uh, Luis uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, he's obviously looking at um, uh, you know tons of data uh, and uh, able to uh, develop uh, you know customized uh, proprietary indicators uh, for him or for yourself or whatever it might be, uh, and really kind of open up the architecture here uh, for Bookmap. So I just need to, to need to mention that uh, to you guys. Uh, anything else, uh, Niels, you want to take a look at here and uh, that you see? Um, you well, not at at um, no, I mainly looked at the DAX today. Um, it's it's the only thing I traded actually. Um, no, I think I'm gonna save, save the rest for for the next time. Um, <laughs> probably better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, there's just a, a few things I'd like to just go over here. Um, like this move here, uh, you know, like I said, I, I think this is really, really quite wicked. Um, yeah. Uh, this is why you, you need to you need to zoom in and you need to really kind of know the facts here mm -hmm. uh, of what's going on because, uh, you know, uh, most of us, uh, you know, familiar with mark, market profile or volume profile. Um, well, you know, here's your here's your low volume node right here at 08. You know, it, it stands out like a beacon, right? But yep. you, you got you to figure what's going on here. This whole area is getting gamed, right? Here's all of this liquidity, but it pulls, okay? Yeah. Everyone's going to be buying. They're going to be, uh, you know, buying in some of these areas, like uh, uh, thinking, oh, you know, this is a, a sure win, uh, you know, for continuation to the upside. I and know, they're, yeah. all, they're all getting stopped out. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and so, that's where the DAX helped, actually, because they were – they were they kept it offered everything was offered so i i mean i have to say i have to admit the es that those bits made me uh like cautious um but it was so many offers in the dax and it's just like uh, no way that was going up you know like so that, that really helped yeah yeah that's really interesting i mean that's what uh luis was talking about yesterday as well uh a lot okay. of the correlate the cor well, correlations uh yeah. you know when uh, right. he says they, they really start to, uh, uh, you know, come together, like it's, it's like given. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, really, real, real powerful way. Uh, yeah. And, and on, on the ES, I, I know, I know it so well. And um, I look at, well, you know, I look at footprint, footprint charts and um, there, there are certain like patterns or, or like, like for me signals that, that I know, I'm pretty like fairly sure that it's gonna happen, and that helps me also to pull the trigger on the DAX, right? So those things happens in uh, happens in the overnight, for example, and then I can use it in the regular trading hours for the DAX. So those things, like yeah, I mean it, it takes uh, a while, I guess, to get to know that. Um, or it takes a few years, but anyway. But once you you see that, it, it's pretty pretty. Handy, I would say. I mean, yeah, it really helps. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, co correlations are just, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, a fantastic thing. Um, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Uh, you know, and that's really, really understanding value uh, of uh, of instruments and, um, uh, yeah. uh, you know, and and projected value uh, mm -hmm. as well. Uh, I, you know, I just wanted to go over. So, you know, I actually I tweeted about this and why I'm going over this um, uh, liquidity here that's pulled, uh, and and how this. I know that this can be confusing to a lot of uh, a lot of traders, uh, but uh, you know, it's about the context here, and we just witnessed it here that they're pulling this liquidity. Okay, so uh, take a look at that setup there, uh, and then take a look at this at the close here. Okay, so there's actually a few in the close here. Actually, this this one's better. Um, so here's the close, right? Now the, this liquidity down here was okay. never tested as well. Yeah. Okay, uh, so um, uh, it's just a, it's just a skew in the book, right? They never yeah. it never tested, uh, but you've instead what you've got here is you got the aggressor on your side, okay, the buyer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and they continue to buy at higher highs here, and then look at they they even bid it up here. I mean this is going up to the higher areas of liquidity. Right. Yeah. 
So uh, uh, yeah, don't uh, you know understand the context of the liquidity and the aggressor together uh, is really where uh, you know the rubber is going to meet the road here. Uh, you know, it, it kind of exhausted out here on this little point up at the high here, but it came back with more buyers again, and then it rotated one more time here, and they really picked it up here. This is where this is going to break. Okay, so um, uh, starting to understand the context of this kind of stuff, uh, and then the context of this here uh, will help you keep away from these areas, uh, or, or uh, you know, look for uh, a, a, you know the opposite direction. So um, anyway, point point made. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, well, uh, let's see. I don't really see too much myself uh, either. Um, uh, this little area is looking kind of interesting here. This is where you know we see some initiated buying or you know pulling it up uh, uh, out of this area, and then it did make new highs here. And they're back in the book here, right? But uh, you know we have FOMC uh, in less than an hour. Uh, I imagine we're probably going to see this kind of bounce around uh, without uh, too much of a, a, a direction or, or too much of a distinction here in the uh, in the order flow. Uh, seeing some pretty high liquidity down at 0, 009 here, and then 0, 011. So we're in we're in a narrow range. So usually in these narrow ranges like this, you'll see something break. Okay, and we'll uh, we'll keep an eye out. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll uh, go for maybe about uh, another uh, seven minutes here, uh, and we'll end the webinar. But uh, uh, keep an eye on this area here because. Uh, you know, it's only two points in the S and P, uh, and uh, something's going to break here. Right? Yeah. You'll, you'll, it's you'll, funny, like you say, high liquidity. Like, like I don't know, like a year back or two years back, like five twenty twenty four, and how much is it? Like five ninety one. I know. It I was know. so low. Uh, I mean, there were like fifteen hundred on every rule. Like, I know. You know it's it's terrible now. <laughs> it, it's crazy. I mean, um, well, that that's you know that comes with the volatility. The um, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I, you know, but um, ah, you know, it's all relative. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. Here comes here comes the break here, uh, yeah. and um, partial partially filled here. Uh, looks like four four hundred and ten, but uh, that's not all. Um, yeah, four four hundred and forty there. Okay, so that that's fact, and yeah, we know that. Yeah. Yeah, and then let's see if we can uh, target. Let's see if we can get back up into the range, and we'll target these guys here, or maybe the other side up here at at eleven. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, anyway, um, nothing too distinct here uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't get too crazy just like for FOMC. So. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. I mean, don't get caught up in, in it. It yeah. really needs to be clear. Uh, that that's right. one thing. Like in the um, uh, in the webinars, like you know, uh, starting to understand like that that clarity. Like it, you know, we go through the process mm -hmm. uh, of reading the order flow, uh, and then you know, it it should do something based on what we see. But uh, and I'll try to find an example here, but. Um, uh, and, it, and it, you know, usually kind of does what we anticipate, but make the point though, that look, look at this example here and look at this low volume. And then let's look at the example earlier in the morning and look at, see how the high volume really defines it. And it's really clear. This is, they're moving the, the you know, the instrument here. Uh, and then uh, what we're looking at in the afternoon or like, you know, around 1130 Eastern, uh, you just, it's just not as clear for the most part. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's up, you know, it's up to your risk profile, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, looking for that kind of clarity uh, will keep you away from uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, mediocre trades. True. Yeah. 11.30 is when I go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what time is that for you though? Uh, 5.30 or is That's it? 5.30. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can see the close here. So uh, that's when it broke. That's when it broke to the upside here. Uh, yeah. it, it does that a lot. Like after European European close, you get some kind of reaction, and then um, it's actually usually a pretty good pretty good setup at that point. But 
So I should, should stay till 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that but is I true. At eight, like that's like 2 a.m. Eastern. So <laughs> that's when the, the DAX opens. Um, the future that is. The cash right. opens at 3, 3 a.m. Eastern. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's uh, um, a London, London. London time. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the. Um, uh, no, that's, that's uh, Amsterdam Frank time. Frankfurt. Yeah. Frankfurt, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're you're in um, uh, uh, you're on uh, on Frankfurt time or um, ne yeah, Netherlands great. time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, well, you know, uh, this is a kind of tricky little area in here. We 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 go over this uh, in in the webinars uh, quite a bit here, uh, and, and this is right at the close, so we're talking about it right now. Uh, and let me just go over this here because it it's uh, it's not the greatest example here, but uh, it's still doing it. So let's just cover it. Um, you know, here, here's where we broke down, right? This is where the aggressors came in. Okay, the you know they're hitting the bid pretty hard here. Uh, and um, you know, targeting higher liquidity down here, and we we noted this in real time, okay, that they actually traded here, or and I'm sorry, not this one. There was another another one, um, uh, but uh, you know, so they started to trade here, right? So that that's fact. We know that, right? So it's it's not fully absorbed, but uh, uh, it's higher liquidity, uh, and uh, most of it is absorbed, okay? So we're getting a pullback, and when it comes back to this little area where it broke from here. We start. We initially anticipate that there's going to be a lack of buying, and we're going to find more sellers uh, start to reload to push this down higher or lower, uh, and uh, and make uh, maybe an equal low or lower low. Okay. Now, what happens in this little critical area here was there was a, a battle that kind of erupted here, uh, and um, uh, we we see that the buyers are winning it. Okay. So we're seeing more buying up above this little area here. Right, right in here, okay, and it's going back and forth now. So what this means is at this point here, buyers are starting to take control, okay, uh, and um, uh, uh, this area here, I mean, basically is going to be, um, uh, you know, trap trap volume in here, okay, and uh, and they're going to uh, th these people that sold the breakdown here are, are going to feel the pain back up into these areas here where their stops are most likely going to be. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah. this little critical pivot here uh, is what we look at uh, qu quite a bit, uh, right? Uh, not that one. And, and if you trade in Europe, then you know that they close at 11.30 and then they have an auction price that opens at 11.35. So usually you see a push till 11.35 and then they can trade that price till 11.40. Um, so that's, I think that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, because that's exactly when the move uh, it kind of stopped. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, that wow. really moves on Europe that last bit. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, I didn't know that. Uh, that's uh, yeah. that's great to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll uh, we'll definitely uh, uh, keep keep that one in mind. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and then, you know, putting this together here though, like, uh, uh, although partially absorbed down here, we did, we did find that uh, these guys are long, you know, the majority of them are long. Okay. And there wasn't quite enough selling, selling pressure to go one more point lower. Uh, but the buyers did come back in, but they, they took control here. Okay. So now we know where they're taking control. It's any kind of pullback into this area here. Now we're starting to anticipate buyers again, or lack of sellers. Okay. And uh, in fact, uh, this is pretty bullish here because the move came up into uh, this area here. Uh, this is where it broke from here. And basically we see the volume start to pick up here, right? And above that area. So kind of looking for a pull back into that area. Uh, and then maybe maybe here as well. Uh, and, uh, and that's exactly what occurred, right? And then we started making higher highs here. So anticipating again, more buyers in this little area here. Okay, so we're, we're understanding the traders, we're understanding the order flow, uh, where these guys are positioned uh, and who's in control, right? And you can see, I mean, that, that played out, you know, pre pretty nicely here a number of times until it broke, okay? Now the sellers are taking control, all right? So uh, uh, anyway, uh, some, uh, just, you know, some basics here. I mean, this is more more kind of advanced stuff than the, than the basic order flow uh, webinar, but uh, uh, you know, this is the kind of stuff we look at, uh, and then we start to anticipate, you know, some of these 
uh, higher liquidity areas here on the offer to uh, to be targeted. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know anything else that uh, you you, um, uh, you you see here, um, uh, Niels, that you wanna you wanna go. No, over? not at this point. No. Yeah, me me neither. <laughs> uh, not it's not much. So, um, all right. Well, we go, we've gone for uh, about um, uh, 45 minutes here. Ah, let's see here. Um, <laughs> uh, we have uh, uh, Luis in here. Um, huh. Let's see here. I, I believe, uh, let me see if, uh, hold on just a moment here. Let me, uh, let me double check here. <laughs> And I don't see him in here. He came in as a different name yesterday. Uh, <laughs> would be great to get his uh, his insight here. Yeah. Where is he from? Uh, he uh, lives in uh, Stockholm. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, institutional trader. Uh, you know, trading uh, is a long experience uh, trading. Uh, and uh, uh, anyway, um, I don't see him in here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, so uh, it, does anyone anyone have any questions here? Let's see. Uh, just go through a few more, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap it up here. Um, and again, I'm, I'm sorry guys, uh, you know, uh, you know, Niels is uh, being a sport here and, uh, uh, you know, hanging in with us as we uh, go through what we, what we see or, you know, what's going on in the, in the, uh, live markets here, but, uh, uh we will do it again. And, uh, Niels is, you know, uh, he's going to have some great examples. Uh, he always does. Um, oh, some Bitcoin. Yeah, we can take a look at Bitcoin quickly. Um, and then a few more questions here. Uh, do you use the CVD to determine who's in control? Yeah, Daniel, I will use the CVD. Um, it, it really depends. Um, I, I really like to see it in terms of absorption. Uh, you'll see the CVD spike, but price won't because it'll hit a whole bunch of uh, limit orders. Um, it just helps me verify some things. Uh, or when the day is really kind of choppy and I don't have a feel for what's going on, um, then um, uh, the, uh, uh, I look at maybe some of the CVD for the, you know, kind of cumulative volume over time where I can't read it, um, you know, to see maybe who is in control. So the CVD will help me with that as well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really, I, I really like to see who's in control, uh, like in some of these little areas here, like we're, we're mentioning. Um, uh, and, um, uh, that, I like a lot more personally than I do like looking at the, uh, you know, the CVD. Okay. Uh, and uh, let's see here. i uh, got a question for Niels. Believe that Niels would be great to answer. Uh, are the aggressive price movements toward liquidity an attempt to scare the limit orders uh, or are they indicating exhaustion and eventual uh, liquidity trade? And that's from, uh, from Tyler. Um... Well, it really depends, I guess. I mean, um, towards liquidity. Well, usually price moves to liquidity anyway. Um, your point about being aggressive. Well, they, they, they don't need to do it aggressively. Um, but fast moves are in general um, to scare people, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but but I yeah I wouldn't say it's always to to scare people towards liquidity no but um, but fast moves in general are unless they continue like w with news or something um, unless they do that it, it's usually yeah to to get people on the on the wrong foot yeah hmm hmm okay in my opinion <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. He's, talk, he's talking about maybe a, a specific example at 12 uh, or 11:20 here. 11:20. So 
So this into here? Yeah, that, it's European clothes. So, um, ah. yeah, this, that, that usually moves faster uh, anyway. Um, so I wouldn't say it's too scary. It's just it's closing up. So they, they, they're closing the books and um, probably probably the only time in the day that the ES might react on Europe <laughs> instead of the other way around. Um, so I wouldn't say that is to scare people. No, they may be re rebalancing before closing down, and that has, in this case, also a little effect on the ES. Not understood. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, let's see here. Uh, well, yeah, ES is, uh, yeah, it, it, we saw the, the move. I was actually looking forward to come back maybe into the range here, but uh, uh, nope, nope. Uh, we, we, uh, we're, we're going to test this uh, lower liquidity here. Uh, yeah. And then uh, uh, maybe they can continue on down. Maybe we can get down to the lows of the day here uh, as well. That's well, what I've been. For a sideways day anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, me, me as well. Um, I, but this is just juicy down here, though. I mean, there's going to yeah. be a lot of a lot of liquidity down here just by stops. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm totally. sure I'm sure they're shooting for it. Um, so oh, yeah. looking looking for this area here to uh, to trade, and we've got the figure down here too. So we got 2,800 the figure. Oh, so yeah. uh, you know, keep keep cool. an eye out on on that. I think maybe as well. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, but again, you know, it, now now it's like. Uh, uh, 35 or 37 minutes we have FOMC okay so I mean that's just such a huge event um, so anyway sure. um, yeah all right well uh, thanks Niels thanks uh, very much um, and uh, we'll um, uh, we'll we'll do it next week yeah sounds good okay all right guys uh, yeah we'll um, uh, we'll call it a day here uh, and um, uh, sorry we didn't get to this Bitcoin here I don't have the uh, data quite right um, since it was so volatile some months ago, now I'm looking at $5 per tick. Well, it, it's really slowed down here. I, I need to look at a dollar uh, a tick here. So I, I'm sorry, I don't really have good data here to look at for Bitcoin. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, adjust my chart though, uh, and uh, we'll look at it next time, okay? All right, guys. Yeah, thanks, Niels. Thanks for being a sport, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll do it again next week sometime. Okay, all right, guys. All right, yeah, take care. All right. You're welcome. See you All guys right, later. Bye -bye.